This town is as hot as hell. When I moved from the City of Angels to the Body of Christ, I thought it might get a little cooler. Turns out, LA pays their air conditioning bill. My landlord doesn't. I haven't sweated this much since I was framed and woke up with that dead girl. I've done lots of bad stuff. I was what you may have called a bad cop, but I hadn't killed that girl. I was never convicted for killing her, but the people after me got what they wanted. I lost my badge, my pension, my wife. And all I can do is photograph cheating husbands for their heartbroken housewives. What a way to scratch out a living. But that isn't the problem sitting at my desk today. The only thing hotter than South Texas weather is being grilled by some slick-haired shyster in a suit worth more than my annual salary. I must have passed out in my chair, because I woke up to find this shiny-toothed weasel sitting at my desk like we had an appointment. I would have kicked him out, but he brought a bottle of scotch. The good stuff. So I figured I'd sit down, get drunk on his hooch, hear what he has to say, and then kick him out. As it turns out, he wanted to know about my current investigation. I'm no priest, and since he was buying, I figured what the hell. So I settled in to tell him. Two days ago, this good-looking broad knocks on my door after hours. She wasn't exactly my type, but I'd been in a dry spell lately, so I let her in. Hey, any port in a storm, Dad always said. How can I help you? I was hoping she needed photos of her husband. Women who have been cheated on are usually good for some pity sex. I need you to find my little sister. No dice. A missing persons case. My sister Samantha has been missing for months. Now I'm worried about her. I eyed her. Not just for her sweet looks, but because something didn't add up. Good-looking broads don't walk into my office. Ever. Call it my gut, the fact that she just looked familiar, but something wasn't on the level. Where did I know this dame from? She was spooking me, so I decided to scare her off the best way I knew how. My bill. Two thousand dollars up front. Expenses to follow. Nobody I know carries that kind of cabbage around for a missing person, so you can imagine my surprise. Deal. She dropped the cash. I dropped my jaw. She turned and walked out, her backside waving goodbye with every step. Damn, now I gotta go to work. So I did some digging around, made some calls, ran down a few leads. Turns out Samantha had been shacked up with the trigger man for the local syndicate. She liked gangsters, and she'd been in and out of trouble with the law for years. Six months ago, she up and pulls a Houdini, leaving without a trace. Talk about a cold case. She was a wannabe actress, so who knows? Maybe I passed her on the road when I left L.A. I got back into the office at 8.15. I had gotten an address out of one of Samantha's hophead friends, a doper who couldn't remember anything until I fed him a knuckle sandwich. Tomorrow I would... Damn it! The cocking of a hammer always gets my attention. Especially when it comes from behind. I froze. Who would want to ice me? Maybe I could get them to talk. Find out who's trying to punch my ticket. What should I talk about? So, hot enough for you. Wait a second. Now, I had taken some shots before. I mean, in my line of work, somebody always starts throwing around lead after a while. But I was pretty sure I'd just seen three 45s paste my ticker all over the wall. Nobody walks away from that. Then the shyster spoke. Is it hot enough for you? Damn. I knew I'd been knocking on the devil's door for years. I guess I shouldn't be surprised when he finally answered. But I had to know. So who did me in? You really think it matters? I knew it didn't. We have some business to discuss. Well, at least you brought the good scotch. Mom always said I could find a silver lining in anything.